the recent proposal coming out of London to replace the dollar-based world financial system with a so-called one-world currency leading into the G20 summit is a piece of clinical insanity. Then again, there are only two problems with the proposal to collapse the dollar and eliminate the U.S. role in the world economic recovery. First, there are actually world leaders who are stupid and insane enough to do it. And second, the proposal to downgrade the dollar in a financial system denominated in dollar debts would drive the entire system into an immediate collapse from which it could not recover. Today, the world monetary financial system exists on the basis of a fantasy. The fantasy among nations like Britain and their unfortunates in Russia, China, and even the U.S., is that a world system could function without the leading role of the United States. But think about it for a moment in terms of reality, not fantasy. Right now, there are hundreds, if not thousands, of trillions of dollar-denominated debts outstanding in the system, and that debt not collapsing is the only thing holding the world financial system together. So you pull the plug on the dollar, devalue it. What have you just done? The debts you've been counting as assets collapse overnight, and the world enters a full-scale economic and social breakdown crisis, a new dark age. Well, obviously, you can't do that outright. So instead, the proposal is to replace the dollar as a leading reserve currency and bring in a new currency, a world currency, to take the place of the dollar that will bail out those dollar-denominated debts at value, which are now propping up the world financial system. This will be an absolute disaster, and it will sink the entire world economy. As soon as they agree to get rid of the dollar, the dollar plunges. And if the dollar goes under, they all go under, no matter what fantasy they try to implement in the meantime. LaRouche stated today that world leaders are actually stupid enough to try to do it, and that anyone thinking about doing it should be put into a mental asylum quickly. There is no middle ground. The proposal is like the man who takes cyanide. There's no room for correcting that mistake. There's no reform of that decision. The system immediately goes down. And all they have to do is announce they're going to do that. Concluded at this week's conference, and the system goes down. It's cyanide for the world economy, and that means no antidote. You do this, and you've bankrupted the world system, shut down production, and it all disappears virtually over the weekend. That's the proposal. The problem is that some people want to believe that world leaders have it under control, that their world currency proposal must somehow be more nuanced, more sophisticated, because they couldn't possibly be so stupid, wouldn't possibly let something so bad happen. Well, bad news, because they are, and they would. As LaRouche has been warning, most people, most leaders of nations, and most economists are so systemically incompetent that they would consider and are considering the cyanide proposal. They've made themselves believe that today's crisis occurred because troubles came from the outside and threatened a viable system. So in that, they fail to realize that the world system of the past 40 years has been guided by a policy careening toward insanity. And now they're trying to find a solution without changing their insane assumptions. They're going to try to implement a world currency. And if they succeed in doing that, they're going to sink the world economy. So what we have to do here in the U.S. is make the decision to reorganize our currency, go back to what LaRouche proposed in 2007 with the Homeowners and Bank Protection Act and two-tier credit system. The United States has sufficient power to do that, and other nations will willingly join us if we lead it. And we must lead it, because it is within the United States Constitution to reorganize in bankruptcy as U.S. law. It is the FDR principle, and we must go back to that principle today. Unfortunately, President Obama hasn't shown any conception of that solution, and if he continues to allow himself to be dragged down by some in his policymaking circles, he could go down as the worst president in modern history just by continuing down the path he has been on. Now is the time to show leadership. If you get desperate and follow the British in trying to eliminate the dollar, you're taking the cyanide pill. And as soon as you take that cyanide pill, there is no chance for reform. 
The world system disappears, and you disappear.